Hello, this is Eric Lyons, and I'm going to be giving a quick video tutorial on one of the examples being used at the SIP workshop. So this video is going to be focused on doing whole genome comparisons using SynMap of two Bacillus thuringiensis genomes. So you can access SynMap from Koji's homepage, and when SynMap loads, the first thing you're going to need to do is search for the two genomes you want to compare. So we're going to search for thuringiensis just by typing in part of its name. And once it searches in one box, I'm just going to copy and paste that over to the second um, organism search box. And I'm going to select two of the genomes. One of them will be this strain, and the other one will be this strain. So once the two genomes are selected, um, I can see that they're unmasked and we have coding sequence. To run it, all I need to do is press a, the button Generate SynMap. Now, this analysis has already been done, so all the intermediary files has, and uh, analyses have already been generated, so the results come back very quickly. And what I want to do is I want to investigate one of these inversions to determine um, what the breakpoints are at the end of it, as well as to determine if it's real. So to do that, um, using this master dot plot image, I'm going to click on the central chromosome chromosome comparison, and this will pop up a a uh, zoomed in version of that dot plot. Now here, when these crosshairs mouse over a region and they turn red, that means it becomes a, a link to GBO for doing a high resolution analysis. Also, if you notice that up at the very top, there's a box that you can drag around that'll give you the gene names as well as the coordinates of each of these gene pairs. So it's not only the colored ones that you can click on, but any of these other little tiny gray dots you see in the background. Each one of these represents a putative homologous gene match. So I'm interested in this inversion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right in the middle of it, and this is going to launch GIVO, um, which opened up in a different window. I'm going to drag it over. And I want to analyze the entire region. So um, I'm going to increase the size to um, 150,000 nucleotides upstream and downstream from these anchor points, and then run the analysis. Now, <clears throat> this hopefully should go pretty quickly. Um, it's still a relatively small region. And now the results have come back. These um, pink bars represent regions of sequence similarity. I can click on them and I can see that we have uh, nice blocks um, on these two regions. Here's one that's sort of crossed over. And the ones on the bottom represent regions of sequence similarity in the opposite orientation between these two regions. And I can see that we have a, a nice inversion there. So now in terms of what's happening at the breakpoint, I can see that there are these gray genes. Um, that look different than the typical green ones, which represent coding sequence. Well, these represent RNA genes of some sort. So I can click on one of them and see that this is a 23S, the one next to it is a 16S, and then there's this little tiny cluster right here, um, which are a bunch of tRNAs. And what I can see is that if I click on these hits up here, they match across over here to the other side of the breakpoint in the other region. And likewise, I see a similar pattern with those guys. So it appears to be that the breakpoint of these inversions are happening at this ribosomal um, gene uh, operon, including this cluster of tRNAs. So I want to now zoom in on, on these on both strands and take a look at them in a little bit more detail. So I can use these slider bars um, to hone in on a particular region. I'm going to do that for both of them. And to rerun the analysis, you just press Run GIVO. So now here are those two regions. Here are those tRNAs. I can see that they match all over the place with respect to one another. And now what's interesting is these are rRNAs and that they are missing from this region down here. Also what you can see is that there are these orange bars. These orange bars represent unsequenced regions of the genome. Um, when you do uh, shotgun whole genome sequencing and then use a lot of these algorithms for assembly, if you have any large, highly repetitive, and highly identical sequences, highly similar sequences, such as ribosomal genes, um, these are very difficult for the assembly algorithms to process. So often they get left out of the um, assembly. And at the same token, these algorithms will offer, or people tend to take these contigs that the algorithms make and join them together, padding those regions by some number of ends to represent a gap in the assembly. So looking at this kind of a pattern where we have some RNA genes up here, they're missing down here, I suspect that they're present, but they're sort of lying within this gap, so they didn't get assembled correctly. 
Also, when you see a bunch of gaps like this, it makes the entire assembly somewhat suspect because these tRNA clusters can also pose some assembly problems. So there's a very high likelihood that this region um, may not be a real inversion that just represents a sequencing um, assembly error. So I hope that was relatively clear. And uh, the only other point I do want to make up, or bring up is that if you ever want to regenerate one of these analyses you've done, you can always uh, copy this link that's present right down here, and it will regenerate it for you. Thank you very much.